exchange of tariff concessions. privilege uh, to present to you the newly elected chairman of the parliamentary Labour Party and leader of the Labour Party, Mr. Harold Wilson. Lynn, Chief Whip and friends, I'm not going to say very much tonight. As I've already said, at the parliamentary party, you'll understand that at a time like this, even someone who's not normally at a loss for words <laughs> finds it a little difficult to find words to express himself. Not least because all of us are conscious, despite the excitement of which we see one or two signs tonight, of the tragic event which created the vacancy which has been filled tonight. I said to the party in the House that while it is an occasion for a deep sense of responsibility, of gratitude to those who have reposed their confidence in me, it is at the same time a very humbling experience to be elected as leader of this great movement, not only the parliamentary party, but this tremendous movement in the country. And if there was one thing that was clear, it was that all three candidates and any other possible candidate would have been quite inadequate to the honour that has been thrust on me tonight. There are just one or two things, however, I would like to say. This moment of election is at a time when in many respects the task is a great deal easier than it might have been. For one thing, during the last three or four weeks when the party has not had no elected leader, we have remained a cohesive force in the House of Commons. And a great deal of the credit for that must go to the acting leader of the party, George Brown, who has kept us together during that period. I, th 
during these last three weeks, I don't think anyone can say that we have been backward or bashful in our task of attacking the government. If any of you are in any doubt about that, you might just check with Mr. Macmillan. There is another thing. We are a democratic party. Not every party would have gone willingly through what we have gone through in the last three weeks. The conservative system of electing their leader, if I can use that word, I'm referring to the election, not the leader, uh, is of course one uh, which does not involve a protracted period. But in our case, I think we can say, despite all the great interest shown in this election, that the party has remained fully united, both in Parliament and in the country. Of course, a few things have been said. My two friends who were candidates with me and I have learned a number of things about ourselves that we didn't know before. <laughs> And if there was any deficiency amongst the more exuberant supporters of particular candidates in this direction, you in the press have helped to, full, to fill the gaps. <laughs> so if any of you are speculating as to what mandate I have been given, I will only say to you what I said in the party meeting. The first mandate, and this is a very sacred trust, is to maintain the unity of the party that Hugh Gateskill handed on three weeks ago. I don't think that's going to be very difficult. The second mandate is to continue those policies which were worked out under his leadership. The main lines of our policy on every subject that faces us were worked out under his leadership and we were united on them. Those policies will not be changed. Thank you. Mr. Wilson is now available to answer questions. Since the time is limited, will you put your questions in as few words as possible? First question, please. Well, you can't say it doesn't matter very much either way because it was a very, very important event. But since it took me some 40 minutes to try and answer that question on Monday in the House, I find it very difficult to give a short and compressed answer this evening. The important thing is not what happened at Brussels, still less who was responsible, but what this country is going to do now uh, to restore its confidence in itself, to build up our economic strength and restore our lot dynamic in economic affairs, what we're going to be able to do re to release the tremendous reserves of energy in this country that have gone unreleased under the Conservatives, and what concrete proposals we can make in world economic affairs. These are the things that matters now, not looking back on the past 18 months of Brussels. Next. 